two of VidCon right now. It's just the morning, we're in the car going to get Kylie. Copyright music. Two houses down. Anyways, so I just picked up Kylie. Hi. And we're walking to the car. Can't wait for VidCon today. Day two. So we're meeting our fam squad at a fountain at the Anaheim Convention Center, like where the festival is. I have to be alone. Oh my gosh, it's like six something. We're okay. So, um, part of our fam squad is going to a panel. We're gonna go to the short videos high production value, and then we're probably gonna go to the parking lot to get my poster. I honestly can't say I'm only true to myself as a creator. Like, there's this balance that I feel like has to be had for eternal balance. Yeah, no, seriously. But, but also, I remember an algorithmic battle. Like, like yeah. I know a two minute video just will never really work for me. Mm. I think that's pretty interesting because, like, oh. Ooh. All right. You all just sit over here and start to move in, and we gotta go. Please let me know that you're all still there. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I, I think the algorithm stuff. Like personally, I go, nah, I'm not gonna think about that because the way I feel about it is, is again what your own goals are. But like personally, I like I'm leaning into filmmaking, and I sort of think about my channel almost as like a show, and I want that to be like. I want that to sort of exist as a, as a bunch of quality stuff that I've made and I don't want to pander to the specific algorithm that exists this year because like next year it could change again and then it won't matter like the stuff that you're making well, you know, I want to put it on your back and um, I'll fucking go uh, you make me mind um, I want what I make to sort of stand the test of time honestly and, I, and I, I, for me personally I don't like to think about the algorithm stuff because I think it was distract me too much uh, into making stuff that I don't, I wouldn't be thinking about the creative which I think is what I really value. Yeah. Yeah. I think rather than trying to stretch a, a two minute concept that you know is really good to a five minute thing because you need to be better for the algorithm, you're better off, if it, if it becomes a worse video when you do that, then even if it's better length for the algorithm, then it's a bad thing when people are picking away from it, it's not going to really, it's not going to do well either way. So rather than trying to stretch a, a good two minute concept to a bad five minute thing, Come up with something really good five minute thing. Uh, you, you'll take a walk away from that creator. We'll look at it in a student version, but whatever you do, make sure what you're presenting is its best version of itself. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I think too, it's about finding a balance in your like the content yes. that you're making. Like, you should find a show or something recurring that you can do that um, <laughs> does like do well with the algorithms of the books. <laughs> That way you have like a baseline of stuff that is appealing to the algorithms, appealing to you know what YouTube looks for. But then in between those things, like putting out passion models or putting out things that you just want to do. So that way you have a, a safe baseline that's kind of bringing in new people and bringing in viewers. But then stuff that you want to do, which is really important, like. YouTube is about authenticity, so people really want to see you, they really want to see what you want to make. Um, but, you know, YouTube also wants a certain kind of video and a certain kind of tags and kind of thumbnail, so it's just a balance between the show. Yeah, and I, I think authenticity is a, is, a, is a word that gets thrown around a lot, and I think authenticity to people sort of means oh, I need to be me, and like, they just want to see me be me, where I think that what you just said is really important is to distinguish, uh, to distinguish between they want to see what you want to make. So if you're making something and you're inside from the camera and you're trying to be like a, any of a vlogger or something, and people can tell that you, that you maybe don't care about that as much as you would if you were making something else. Like if you want to make like Japanese covers, you know, dressed up as a tiger, and that's what you really care about, then I say do that because people will respond, well maybe don't do that, but like people will respond to what you are passionate about. You, you know what's weird about the internet? I find that projects that I really care about don't do as well, and the ones that I don't really care about, I don't put as much effort in, end up blowing up. And I think that's the weirdest thing. I think I think it's funny, and I don't know if you guys can all relate to this, but if you, any of you have made higher produced content, it's the ones you do a crazy amount of pre-pro on, and you hire a whole crew, and it seems almost bogged down and slow to create it and kind of hinder it or funnel it through some sort of smaller pipe. Um, whereas I totally agree with you, it's like, 
when it's, uh, I'm gonna go pick up this video, make it today, edit it tonight, post it in the morning, like somehow it does 20 times better. Crazy, crazy. I think um, another thing in terms of production value, uh, find people that love what they do. Find a guy that loves doing sound. Find a guy that loves editing or coloring. You find people that do the best job in their position and it just makes your job a lot easier and brings production value up literally every time. Well, let's talk about that because a lot of people here are in LA or have a film community. What, where do you guys, where have you found your resources? Well, I went to film school and um, I went to film school in Orlando, I went to Full Sail. And so I built up a network of people that love what they do in their perspective field. So I think gravitating or you know networking with people around you that really love what they do, you know, it's easy to find someone that loves sound, that wants to record it. I feel like the quickest way to get someone out of a project is bad sound. You know, if the sound is terrible, people are gonna click away. If it's echoey, if it's trash, if it's too low, people will click away from that. So find someone that loves sound and find someone that loves lighting. Find someone that loves operating the camera and into cinematography. You find these key people. Um, and you know, like it's it's a collaborative process at the end of the day. Some people just do it by themselves and they're great at it. But I find that finding people that are passionate about these different fields that make this whole thing happen is where you'll find that production. Right? Yeah, and I, I think I think that don't think that you have to do that all at once. Like I've been making stuff for ten years and I've not found all those people yet. Like I've got a person who I trust who's a director of photography, I've got a person who I trust who's onset sound, post production sound. I've never found someone who I trust more editing than me, which I wish I could. But like there's there's just certain things that like that when you list things like that you go, oh where am I gonna find all those people? I think that be passionate about what you're making, do all the jobs, and then as you continue you'll find people who can replace doing the stuff that you don't particularly like doing as much. So don't feel like you have to do all of that straight away. I just think that, yeah, yeah, you just, you'll, it will take time. Totally, yeah, and like, along with not worrying about doing all that right away, just start with your friends. I mean, like, people like to see, on YouTube especially, they like to see you working with people that you... Hey guys, love your hair. Thank you. <laughs> I'm with Kylie, and we just saw the short video's high production value with Zach King, and was good. Autumn, so I don't know all of them. I'm sorry, but so we're going to the Joy Gusecco one on the community stage now. So I'm so excited for you guys to see it. Hey guys, I'm Manny Amuel. Um, I am the record producer, and all I want to say about it is that I'm that bitch in the show. I'm the troublemaker this season, and everyone else has their jobs, but I definitely cause a bit of trouble. All I gotta say is, hold on to your wigs, baby. Hey, I'm Matt Pat. And uh, I am the detective this season, which basically means I'm the primary puzzle solver with the her over here. The two of us are the big nerds on the cast this year, so, so nerd pride! Yeah! Hello everyone, I'm Joey Grisapa. Um, I'm the one who kills all your favorite YouTubers, so yay! Awesome, hi guys, I'm Sophia. Um, I play the investigative reporter and I, um, as Matt Pat insinuated, basically, my, I just solve a lot of clues and I have no idea what to do with the drama. Yeah, I feel like I'm just like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Guava Juice. <laughs> um, I play the role as the Daredevil, so anything dangerous, anything in our way, I'm there, right over there. You guys excited for season three? She loves to fly around the world, one day Paris, one day Milan. She loves fashion, and she loves to be social. And maybe a little bit gossiping, just a little, just a little bit. That's it. 
So, uh, this, like I said, this is most of the cast. This is a huge entire endeavor that Joey took on to get some of his favorite people up in this season. Um, and not everyone could be here, but there is one person that was jetting over from another panel. So please welcome to the stage, JC! JC, we're all giving a short description of what our character is uh, before they watch this first episode. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm JC Kalen, and I play the hippie. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Now, guys, obviously, uh, YouTube Premium has uh, so many fantastic series, uh, but you guys have been such amazing fans of Escape the Night since day one. So we really appreciate all of your tweets, all of your fan theories, all your fan art reaching out to all these guys, telling them what you love about the series. Continue to do that through this whole time. We're going to go backstage while you guys get to watch this first episode, but afterwards, we're coming back out for a Q&A. So, I'm going to be answering some questions. You guys are going to be asking some questions, so definitely stick around after the screen, but please, enjoy episode one of Escape the Night Season 3!
Season two and one were amazing. Uh, my cat. Well, not as her now. She's old. 
but like when she was really, really fat and just slept constantly. You, you just said your cat? Yes. <laughs> Is that a person? Uh, this question, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess these are kind of historical. Now we destroyed it! Next question! <laughs> well, this question is from Amanda for Virgil. How excited are you to be here at VidCon right now? <laughs> VidCon! There's, uh, there's really way too many people here for me to be calm. Uh, so I kind of hate it. I kind of hate it. I'm so sorry. Jules, uh, Jules asks, while trying to say a line, what's the weirdest thing you've ever, set, ever said instead of the line? Oh, it's metal marking. Metal marking! <laughs> metal marking! I don't know, Talon? Yeah, you take you that. <laughs> there was that video yesterday with the backwards talking. Oh, yeah! Talon had the line that was backwards, it was like, Song, sexy, song, sexy ears, <laughs> long ears. <laughs> That's pretty funny, oh, and that was uh, totally okay. accidental. Yeah. Uh, nope. I don't know. Is there anything you can think of off the top of your head? Um. No. <laughs> uh, it, it's all been. Yeah. Thanks. It's all been. Well, there was that one time where you said, uh, "Joan, I'm in love with you, and I want you to break up with Talon secretly." And I said, "What?" You said nothing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, you said I said the line wrong. Sorry. I'm not here. Not here. <laughs> not okay. How was Phone. We'll talk. People yeah. It was a mistake. You said the wrong line, Ron. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I totally said the, the line, Ron. It was, it was. Yeah. What was the line? The line was. Uh, you got this, kiddo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I got it that wrong. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. Now we have a question, Matt. We have a question here from yeah. Shannon. Shannon asked, "What gave you guys the inspiration for Sanders sides?" I asked that. Oh. Inside out. Should we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talk about. You. I'm sick and tired, I should go